So, today, hopefully, I don't look crazy. I tried to find a good spot. Maybe I need to move a little bit, you guys. I'm sorry. Maybe I'm gonna try to move over here a little bit so you guys can see better. Hey, everybody. Hey. <laughs> so, um, I've been up since seven trying to find the right verbiage for you guys on here. So, I got it. Good morning, good morning, good morning. And the topic of today is, it all makes sense. Okay. So, I'm going to be reading a little bit in Matthew. And we're going to be in chapter 8. And um, the, two cha the two verses I want to key in on are 26 and 27. But I'm going to read from um, 23. But I'm going to come back to 26 and 27. Good morning. <laughs> um, it says, Now he got into a boat with his disciples, followed him. And suddenly a great tempest storm arose on the sea, so that the boat was covered with waves, but he was asleep. He marveled, saying, Who can this be that even the winds obey him? He said to them, Why are you fearful, O ye of little faith? Then he arose. So, some key words in, in, in these two verses that are very powerful, right? So, rebuked. And um, he rebuked the wind. See, we, when God created us, didn't touch it. He spoke to it and told him, be still. The same power Jesus had, we have currently. Signs and wonders that Jesus possessed. They seen everything that Jesus had, and they're marveling at the very sight of Jesus doing what they what he's been doing the whole time because they didn't know that they had their own power in themselves. That's why Jesus said, oh, ye of little faith. What do you mean you're waking me up? You can command it. I'm so confused. I'm getting off topic because I'm getting a little heated because when you start walking in your anointing, divine design. Is what I heard and I keep hearing and I wrote down because it had to get incorporated with make it make sense or it will all make sense I'm sorry nothing in this life is by chance nothing in this life is by chance nothing at all you don't stumble upon a relationship life and this is the season of what's first should be last and what's last should be first meaning you're going to start understanding exactly why you had to go through what you had to go through to get to your next season in this life. And when you get into that new season, you're going to be like, it all makes sense. Or in poverty, you know how to light a candle and cook on a candle and do everything you need to do. You'll start functioning out of survival because you've been there. You know how to do this. You know how you've been through the struggle. So you know how to survive that storm. Nothing was ever by chance in your life. You are who God called you to be. And some people are about to start calling you because you are who God called you to be. And you're the answer to their solutions. You. Everything you've been through, you're about to be called upon because you know how to survive that storm. You know how. Mm. I had to put this in here because it says, see, I am doing a new thing. And see, the new thing isn't going to be new to you because you know how to survive it. But you're going to be in a new place, a new position, a new building, a new relationship. Everything's going to be new. But when you get in it, you're going to say, aha, it all makes sense. God divine designed you for this exact moment. You're who God called you're the generational curse breaker. You've been lonely your whole life because God says you're going to be in a situation where you have to stand alone. But in your aloneness, you're going to have to pull people out and talk to them and counsel them about how you survive your own solitude, your own loneliness, how you survived the very thing that was meant to destroy you. God says, I'm calling on you because you know how to survive this. People are going to start looking for you in these places because you are who God's calling on. And you're like, me? Little old me is not little you. It's never been little you. It's always been big you. See, the devil, I was talking to my brother yesterday, and he said, everyone doubted me and my business. Everyone said that little business. He said, now look at this little business. It's not little no more. 
Everyone's saying little, little, little. See, when people see who you are or they get an inkling of who you are, they always say that little thing. Uh, even when people borrow money from you, oh, I'm going to get you your little funky money back. But it wasn't little when you needed it. It wasn't funky when you needed it. They always try to diminish the characteristics of the new chapter that you're walking into. And they always try to say, oh, oh, this little thing here. Oh, this little thing. When I started my TikTok, they said, oh, you doing your little TikTok thing? Oh, okay, I see you. It ain't little no more. If I had listened to the very people that said that little thing, it wouldn't be little. I would have been like, you know what? They right. That little thing, I'm not going to do that. I can't do that. You know, it's little. But you can't let people who don't see your calling tell you that you're not worth something. No one would know your purpose in your life but you. No one can walk in your shoes but you. Nobody. Don't let somebody tell you what you can and can't do in this lifetime. Because something that's little to them is big to you and God's going to show them that since they didn't believe in the power that you possess that he's going to make that little thing that they said great I remember starting off and I was telling everybody I'm going to start TikTok I heard God and it was like oh you finna do a little preaching thing you finna do this little thing and God said it ain't little sit back I'm about to show them what's big don't ever let someone come in on your dreams good morning good morning good morning nothing's little nothing's little i promise you whenever somebody puts little on your name tell them to add tax to it put some respect behind that little business put some respect by that little car yeah it might be a little kid right now but god says i got a benz mentality it might be a little house right now but god says i got ma a mansion mentality yeah it might be a little business right now but god says i got entre entrepreneurship mentality it might be little right now because Mm, big things happen in little places. God says, I'm calling you out because you're destined to be big. Let it be small right now. I need you to be small right now because I don't want you to be at the top because you won't get the lessons at the top. You'll come in arrogant. I need you to come at the bottom so you can work your way up. And then you know every position. So when someone's in, someone's in a gen janitorial position, you understand them because you've been there before. It will all start making sense. You had to write that little business plan or you had to go work at somebody else's job to get the lessons on how to be your own business maker. Business, a business, um, you know what I'm talking about. God says, I had to have you work for someone else so you'll know how to manage your team when you get there. So you'll know how to be humble at the top. You'll know how to start from everywhere. You had to sweep the floors so when you get in there, you know how you want your store to be clean when you get your own business. Because you know how the crevices and the cracks and the dust that come in every week. Because when you work in business, dust forms every week. Your store has to be cleaned every day because dust comes from everyone coming in your building. You had to know that. You had to know how to convert your, 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 your traffic into sales. You had to know how to do your rewards program. So when you get up there, you know how to have your customers. You had to learn customer service skills. So when you get your own business, you know how to align yourself with it. God says, I had to bring you there to make seven seventy-five an hour. So when you get there, you know how to manage your money accordingly. So when you get money, you don't blow money. He said, I had to make you a budget first. So when you get the money, you'll know how to handle the money. You won't fumble the ball. God said, I had to have you fail in that relationship. So when you get into the new relationship, you know how to appreciate the little things. Because somebody ran you bad for the one day and you laughed at it. Oh, that's all you're going to do for me? And now you went through somebody that didn't even want to want to sweep the porch for you. Didn't even want to drive you to the store and put gas in your car. So when you get into your next relationship, they run you some bad for you start celebrating. Glory. Thank you. I got peace. You knew how to appreciate the little things that God is about to do for you in this new relationship. Because appreciation you didn't know how to do in your other relationship. God said, I had to bring you out so I can show you what to do in your next relationship. You didn't appreciate the small things. You had to go through some horrible things. And now you appreciate walking down the road, holding hands, spending quality time, not spending money, making a picnic in your front yard, eating just the small things, making each other ham sandwiches for work, just packing lunches, just calling on the phone, talking to each other, or just getting a good morning text because they didn't, your last relationship, you didn't get a good morning text. You got a hateful text. You didn't do this. You didn't do that. You got everything hateful. So now you like, Thank you for the good morning text. And then why, why are you thanking me for a good morning text? Because I appreciate you. Because I honor you. 
because I value you. Because everybody isn't the same in this lifetime anymore. Thank you for showing me true love and I'm going to appreciate you because I know what it feels like to not have love, to not be appreciated, to not be valued, to be alone but be with somebody. I appreciate everything that you do for me because you didn't have to. Mm. Okay, God, listen, let me let me read some of y'all stuff because I'm not going to ignore y'all, I promise. I'm trying to come in here and read some of it. <laughs> Speak the word. Yes, Lord. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. You're welcome. Second season, Jesus is coming. Yeah, I know. I, listen, that's, that's so funny that I just read that. Second season. Okay? Because I said, this morning I was talking to God, and he said, look again. And then he said, God of second chances. Look again, and God of second chances. I, I literally have it written down right here. Look again, God of second chances. Then I actually wrote, Help me hear you, God. Open my ears to hear you. Listen. Oh, I have an ear infection, right? So I haven't been able to hear people around me the way I need to hear them. I haven't been able to hear God the way I need to hear him. My ear is clogged right now. So I'm missing some, some key factors because I can't hear the way I need to hear. So when I was writing this, I wasn't thinking about my ear. I was thinking, God, I can't hear you. I need to go, I need to, go to the store and I need to get my ear open because I can't hear nothing. And God says, I understand that. I, I want you to hear me, not with your physical ears. But I want to hear you. I want you to hear me with your heart, with your mind. I want you to feel me when you talk about me. Okay. And so, in closing, I'm gonna go to a conversation I had with my mother today. <laughs> Wait, before I go to that conversation, I'm gonna go to a conversation I had with the pastor today. And he says, "Give me three words about what you're about to talk about today." And I said, "Okay." I said, "Trials, the struggle." And the now the trials is everything you've been through that you think that you thought you would never survive and you got tribulations the struggle is what you've been born into whether it's poverty whether it was abuse whether it was just 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 a struggle in general and the now those two things are going to equip you for your right now season you're going to start saying it all makes sense because everything you've been through is designed for your now season and seasons have different ones I told you guys but right now you're in the season of now. The season is going to be called the now season. And it will all start making sense. I'm going to go to my mother. So I'm talking to her today. And she starts saying, everyone talks about your heart, your heart, your heart. As if the heart is powerful. She says, nothing is more powerful than your mind. She's saying, your heart is just an organ. It pumps blood. She said, your heart pumps blood. Your mind is where the enemy attacks. If you can get control of your mind, you will become powerful. She says because your mind starts playing things in your, in your head like a movie. And then you start acting on it. Once you see it, it will start playing in your head. And then you will start acting on it. When you train your mind, you can control everything. She's saying you start sinning because you see. And when you see, it starts playing. And when it starts playing, you start acting on it. She said, train your mind. Fill your mind so much up with God. Mm. Seek, ye first, seek ye first the kingdom. Whenever, and we're going to talk about sex. Whenever you start seeing that person, that toxic person that you can't get out your life, that sneaky link, that sneaky link, whatever it is, that side piece, whatever it is, it's in your mind. You start seeing it first. Then you start replaying those encounters you had with that person. You start replaying those encounters you had with that person. Then you need to hit them up. Hey, big head. Hey, how you doing? I was just thinking about you. You start playing those in your head. Then they text you back. Then you start meeting up. And then you get yourself trapped back into the same situation. But had you trained your mind, when that thought came, you said, I rebuke you. I know this is an attack of the enemy. I know that my next season is coming because you're coming on me so strongly. I can't shake this off of me. I can't shake this off of me. God, help me. This isn't my body. You take control of my body because I can't do it. Some of us aren't that strong. Some of us can't shake that feeling. Some of us can't shake it. And I'm, I, I, I'm guilty. When I get down, I'm like, oh, God, help me. 
help me because I'm not I'm not going back. I'm not going back. I can't I can't afford to go back. I can't afford to go back and I won't. BB's running in the house. Listen. I can't afford to go back to something that wasn't becoming of me. I can't afford to go down that rabbit hole again and have to pull myself out. I can't afford to repeat a season again. When God said, I already pulled you out, why are you not training your mind? Why aren't you filling yourself up with me? If you open up this book, if you open up this book, you will see me. Hear me clearly. I'm right here. If you open up your heart. Mm. My mom said, the heart is just a vessel. Your mind is where the enemy attacks you. Train your mind. And you will, she said, train your mind. Whatever you battling with, train your mind to focus on God. That's my son behind me, guys. <laughs> yes, amen. Okay. But, you guys. I was up since 7 this morning trying to deliver this word in a way that would make sense for you guys. I didn't want to just say it will all make sense without making it make sense for you guys. So I was reading the Bible and it wasn't making sense and normally the words start jumping out, jumping out, jumping out. So I went to this pastor and he was like, "Help, let me help you. So he went to telling me his version. I'm like, that's not it. That's not it. You, it, it it's not it. And I, and I went and I said, God, make it make sense. And I opened up Matthew went to chapter 8 and the storm came and the word marveled jumped out at me we're in awe people God says people are about to be in awe of you because they never saw you but you saw you you know exactly who you are you know exactly who you are called to be you know who you are and you need to get in alignment with who God called you to be you might not know every bit of who you are but God told you in a dream or in passing or even he even sent a prophet to you to tell you who you are. You know who you are. And people are trying to diminish who you are. And they're trying to say this little thing, this little thing. And you're like, well, it ain't little to me. Or you had a dream when you were growing up. Or I always want to be a model. I always want to be a rock star, a singer. And you're like, God, I can't even sing. And he said, do you believe it? So it shall be. He anoints people. He calls the unqualified. You don't think that he can change your voice? You don't think that believe it? God can do it. If you see it, you can do it. Put it in God's hands and watch what he do for you. Listen, nothing about you is little. That little business isn't little. That little dream isn't little. That little belief isn't little. That Nothing about you is little. Everything is by divine design. Nothing is by chance. You're not little. You're big. And when you hear somebody say it's little, start laughing, clapping, and celebrating. Because God says that little thing is about to become great. Celebrate yourself. Because congratulations is about to start running through. As a matter of fact, I'm going to celebrate you right now. Because some of you, after watching this video, know who you are. And it's all starting to make sense. Everything I'm saying is all starting to make sense for you right now as I'm speaking. Father God, as I close, I ask that you allow them to see them the way you see them. And allow them to know that nothing is ever by chance in this lifetime. That they're called even when they don't know they're called. That they're qualified even though they don't know they're qualified. That they're going to start operating out of divine design. And everything that they've been placed in, every battle that they ever faced, it's going to all start making sense, Father God. Right now, I ask that you see them and you let your light shine upon them. That your glory fill this atmosphere right now. And after watching this video, may their life never be the same again, God. Listen, the happiness that I have right now, I earned this. I worked for this. I struggled for this. And the same thing for them, Father God. Everything that they're going through right now, Father God, they worked for this. They earned this, Father God. You hear them. They cry so much that they can't even, they have the nasty cries where they cry and can't nothing even come out, God, because they're just trying to find you. And after today, may their life never be the same. I ask that you take from my well and you pour into them, that you take from my peace and you give it to them. Peace is going to start being still in their life like never before. Father God, I ask for winds from the north, east, south, and the west to come upon them and may financial blessings begin to rain out, Father God. Only you know the plans that you have for their life. And today, it is finished, Father God. 
it will all start making sense. Go in peace, God. Go in peace, you guys. May the day never be the same for you. Ha, ha, ha.